Okay, so I've done loads of videos on the Raspberry Pi 5 recently, but uh, today's video is on a Raspberry Pi 4, and that's because Android 14 has been released, but it's not yet available for the Pi 5, but it does work on the Pi 4. So let's get installing it. Right, let's just log in. And go to Consta Kang's website, and we're looking for Pi 4, and the Android 14 build. And let's just find the download link. Uh, there is an update, and I've done videos on updating before, but I'm going to start fresh in this video. So let's click on that and start to download. And pick any download mirror. Let's pop an SD card in. Okay, that's all finished. Let's launch Raspberry Pi Imager. Choose OS. Scroll down to use custom and then pick that Android image we've just downloaded. Let's hit choose storage, and this is the SD card I've just put in, and hit write, and yes. Okay, so that's all finished. Let's hit continue, and close down Imager, and close down the web browser. Now, this next step is only needed if you've used a USB device. So I've used an SD card, so I don't need to use this step, but let's show you what I mean. Uh, so we're looking for the boot partition that's just been created, which is this one. So we need to open that up. And we're looking for config.txt. So let's open that up and have a look for boot device, which you can see here at the bottom. So you can see at the moment it's set to SD card, but if you wanted to use USB, you need to delete the hash and then put a hash in front of SD card. But as I said before, I'm using an SD card, so I don't need to do that step. And then you would just do file and save. So let's close this down and shut down the system because we need to switch Pis. So let's pop that SD card into my Pi 4 and switch on. And after about a minute, you should get Android appear. Uh, if it doesn't appear after a couple of minutes, then you might need to try it on a different display. Android is sometimes a bit funny about some different types of display. So if you've got a spare TV or some other display, just try it on that. And here we are with Android 14 on Raspberry Pi 4 for the first time for me. Okay, so you can see it looks pretty basic at this point. Uh, so let's scroll up and uh, go to settings and scroll down to about tablet and scroll down to build number and then just keep clicking on that you can see you're one step you are now a developer so now we've got a system developer options and I think everything's already turned on that we need so let's go back from that so F1 will take you back if you're using a keyboard Okay, so I'm having something that I haven't had happen before on Android, and I'll show you what it is. So if I want to install the Aptide Store, uh, what I would usually do is put in a web address. So let's go for bing.com, uh, and then put in Aptide in the search bar here. And uh, just to install it, we would go to the Aptide Store, and uh, you can see this pop-up happens and we've got this allow all option. So if I click on this, it doesn't actually let me select it. And I sometimes can get it by tapping on the trackpad, but it just doesn't seem to let me select it. It lets me click on anything else. Everything else is absolutely fine, but that's not working. So what I'm going to do is shut down. And uh, because I think this will let me show the rest of the tutorial, I'm going to uh, use a touchscreen. Um, you may not have this problem, but because I haven't seen anything mentioned in all the notes on Consta Kang's page, but let's power this off. Okay, so the red cable is plugged into the Ymaxit monitor, uh, which is giving it touch, and I've got an HDMI cable plugged in as well, and this one is just powering the monitor. And you can see it started up, and if I scroll up with my finger, you can see the touchscreen is working. Let's go to the web browser and type in www.bing dot com just so we can search uh, and in here I'm going to put in mind the G apps github and it will quit out let's try that again 
Okay, it's there. And we've got a 14 arm version here. That should be all right. So let's click on that and one release and then click on this zip file which I don't think it's letting me download so I'm going to download it on another device to a USB stick yeah I've just clicked on it on my iPad and it's let me download it straight away okay so I popped it on this SD card and a little USB reader so I'm going to pop that into the Pi 4 so let's just check my memory stick is showing up uh, so we scroll up and hit files yeah there's my USB stick and on the USB stick is loads of folders and things, but there's BitGeps there, which is a zip file, which is what I need. So now I need advanced startup. So let's go into settings and Raspberry Pi settings under system. And you can see reboot to recovery. So we need to switch that on. Now we scroll down from the top left here, hit the power button and restart. So first of all you get a splash screen and then it will take you to this menu. Click on install and select storage. You can see I've got my USB here. And hit OK. And then we're looking for that gapps file and it must be this one. Don't mind the gapps 14.0.0. And we need to swipe to flash. And it will go through all the steps of installing. Then we need to wipe Dalvec. So click on that and then swipe to wipe. Then we need to go back and back again and back again and then go to wipe and swipe to factory reset and then reboot system. And that's rebooted so now if we scroll up we have the Google Play Store and the Google app. So we log in in the normal way with your Google account. So at the moment it's not verified. It usually takes a few minutes to verify. So we'll have to come back to that. Um, but actually that's a good point to go into the web browser. Will this do web browser as normal? And search for Consta Kang because there's information about Pi 5 because I know that there'll already be some comments about uh, when is this coming to Pi 5 or does this work with Pi 5 uh, it doesn't uh, and I'll show you what Consta Kang has said so we go to Pi 4 go to this latest build that we've just downloaded there's loads of information in here uh, about other things. Widevine is enabled uh, through here. There's some, some instructions on how to do that and uh, all sorts of other things. So if you're having problems or got any queries, it's probably answered in here. So underneath all the updates, the adverts and everything else, uh, there you go. So will this work on Raspberry Pi 5? And it's discussed on a previous build. So hello, will this work with Raspberry Pi 5? If not, are there any speculations on if this will be later supported for Raspberry Pi 5? No, not current builds, of course. We'll see if when I get a Pi 5. I don't see any reason why it couldn't run Android eventually. Linux source code was already pushed and some of the MISA code for the new video core GPU is under review. In any case, this is going to take some time and it's going to require a very recent 6.1 kernel and mainline MISA, so Android 14 is more likely. And obviously this was answered in the time of Android 13. Right, let's try that Play Store again. Okay, so I've just installed a device info app uh, to see if I can get the info to be able to register it. Uh, I tried three other apps and they wouldn't install. So let's open this up. There's a framework ID here. Uh, maybe it's that one. And register. Value already registered. Oh, maybe it converts it to decimal already. Uh, there was a time when you had to convert it yourself. Right, let's go back and try again. Google Play Store. This has been the most difficult Android install I've done for ages. Close it down. And try again. I know it does take time to register, so maybe I'm just going to leave it for a bit if this doesn't work. Yeah, I'm going to leave it for a bit. Okay, so it looks like it's finally worked after a few restarts. 
So I can agree to Google's terms of services. But again, I have to use the touch screen because the mouse isn't working. And accept. And I'm in. Now I have the Google Play Store. I should be able to start installing things. Let's go with PPSSPP. And install. Got a bit of a new look to the Play Store. I guess maybe that is an Android uh, 14 thing. But it's looking pretty decent, working well with the touch screen. So let's go back to the home screen and see if PPSSP, yeah, it's turned up on the home screen. Yeah, so all working, got there in the end. So let me know in the comments if you had that same issue about not being able to click on certain boxes. And I've just remembered I haven't expanded the partition. So if we go to settings, uh, there's two ways of doing this. You can do it within this version of Android, and I've got a separate video on that. But I'm going to use Linux and Gparty because I think it's a, a simpler way of doing it. So if we have a look here, you can see under storage, 56% used, 3.52 gig free. Well, this is a 64 gig card, and it's not using anywhere near that sort of space. So what we need to do is use all of the available space on the SD card. So let's shut this down first of all. I'm going to remove the SD card. I'm just leaving it poking out. Let's plug in a USB device to boot from. Uh, this is KDE Plasma, which is Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, so let's switch that on and launch Gparted. So Gparted. Now, if you haven't got Gparted installed, we just pop my password in. You would open a terminal and type sudo at install gparted. But I already have it installed, so I can close that down. And, uh, and now I need to plug in my SD card into my Pi 4. So it's running off a USB drive, so the SD card slot is free. So now I've plugged that in, it should pick it up. Oh no, you have to launch Gparted again. So Gparted. So now it's going to pick up. You can see there's a drive here with loads of unallocated space. So this is Android and it's always in loads of partitions. It's just the way Android is. So if we right click on this and resize, we can then drag it to, oh, not like that. We can drag the arrow all the way across and then hit resize, hit the tick, and apply. And as simple as that, it will just resize it and it's all done. So we can close that down. And as you can see, we've got 57 gig for Android, 55 gigs free, much better than it was before. So now I can close this down and I'll reboot with the Android SD card in Okay, so let's have a look and see what storage we've got now. So settings and storage, yeah, 14% used, 55.29 gigabytes free. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.